Well, here on our 19th annual Broadway special on Dave's Gone By, very excited to have a new person in the neighborhood, even though she's been doing design for the theater for, my gosh, almost 30 years now. And she is Tony nominated for doing the sound design on Mary Jane the new play. So let me tell you just a little bit about Leah Gelpi. She has done multimedia theater for many years. In fact, she worked with a director named Jay Scheib since the mid-1990s. Um, she's done projections on and off Broadway, well, off Broadway at places like The Vineyard, Playwrights Horizons, Minetta Lane Theater, before now kind of moving into sound. In 2017, she did the sound design for Mary Jane Off-Broadway. Now the show has come to Broadway. It's making her Broadway debut as well as her debut here in the neighborhood. Won't you please welcome Leah Gelby. Welcome, Leah. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, stupid question. How does it feel to be nominated for a Tony Award? <laughs> um, I mean, it's exciting. It's, um, you know, obviously a great honor. I love the play Mary Jane. I think it's such an important work. Um, and it's some it's a project that I've sort of been involved in for years. And so it was really exciting to be able to bring it to a much wider audience. Now I want to hear the difference between working on Mary Jane off Broadway and doing it on Broadway now. But first, can you explain to people? Because a lot of folks will think, well, what is sound that you just like people? You know, you put in the hair, or you put in, yeah. what, is, what do you do as a sound designer? Well, as a sound designer, I consider myself responsible for really everything that the audience hears from the moment that they enter the theater building, not necessarily responsible for it, but thinking about it and making decisions about it. So that includes what you hear when you walk through the lobby, and what you hear when you enter into the empty theater. And um, it really, yes, reinforcement is a big part of it, particularly in musicals and in a large theater, like on a Broadway stage. Um, but it also is the whole soundscape of the play. And that could involve music, sound effects, environmental noise, lots of sounds that maybe the audience doesn't even consciously perceive, but are affecting the experience and the understanding of what's happening on stage. Um, and I, everything that say there's an event that happened once years ago, I did a production of Saved and there's a very dramatic scene in that play in which um, some kids, throw stones into a baby carriage, right? That was so the Edward sound, Bond's English play by Edward Bond, right? Or, right, exactly. So uh, the sound of what happens when those, right? You get, you're not gonna put a little speaker in a baby carriage and make the sounds of, that. that's never going to really work in that moment because it's a horrific sort of moment. So I spent, a long time working on what that sound would be. So anything that is live that's happening on stage that has to make a sound, that's also part of what I get involved in. Well, my, what by, might be an example in Mary Jane of a scene where you're doing your work and the audience notices it maybe, but only subliminally, but you're making sure that it's there. Right. Um, well, without giving away anything, the final scene in the play has um, a constant soundscape and the elements in it are shifting and mounting and heightening throughout the scene. But I don't think that the average person, even the not average person would necessarily register that the sound of the um, fluorescent lights is very sort of particularly used and it's not actually the sound of the fluorescent lights and that it that there's other sort of tonal things and rain that are happening that are pushing us towards the end of the play um, in the sort of dramatic moment. This, this makes me just want to, want to ask a question. What is the most creative thing that you've ever done 
to do almost like a Foley artist thing in terms of sound, like to, to make something that we perceive as what's really going on, even though your actual sound thing wasn't that. Uh, you mean like an on stage or, event? Or pre-recorded, but when you or did recording, you know, mm -hmm. a truck going by might not necessarily be a truck right. that was by. Yeah. Yeah, so I would say that that was probably in a play called Slow Girl that I did at LCT3, um, which Annie Kaufman also directed. And in that play, there's a scene where the characters wake up and they hear, um, what kind of animal is it? But a large lizard crawling across the corrugated tin roof right at night and it has very particular cues and they're worried about it. And so that involved a lot of experimentation in how to make that sound. So at one point I cut up credit card and attached it to my fingers and I was, you know, scraping it on different surfaces and recording that and trying to use that as playback, you know, and that didn't work. And we just tried lots of things and it ended up being a large, like rubbery plastic lizard toy, essentially, that we attached like screws and nails to. And then it was pulled on a rope across the roof in the moment on stage, because there are certain things that really, you know, you really, you feel if it is a sound that is there, um, Versus or, recorded. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was going to ask you, um, in terms of Mary Jane, what were the differences, if any, between doing it at um, Off-Broadway a, a few years back, with smaller, mm -hmm. smaller house, smaller that, um, yeah. the Broadway production that's on right now? Well, it, it's very different because this play in particular has a lot of intimacy in it. And um, they're being able to move into a much larger space and yet preserve that sense of intimacy, particularly sound wise, was quite challenging. I mean, you have a different room, a different way that you need to make sounds move sort of geographically in space. But um, in terms of reinforcement, it took a a long time for us to get to the right place where you could still, the actors could perform with a sense of intimacy and yet everyone could hear them throughout this the theater and it wouldn't sound mic'd. And, you know, speaking of mic'd, and, and uh, this does bring up a question that a lot of people have about sound in general on Broadway, where either they complain it's teeny, that's the word everybody mm -hmm. uses, or why does everything now have to be so loud, almost like a rock concert? Do you yeah. do you le try and shy away from that? Or how do you deal with teeny? I think that, um, I think that there's a lot more room on stage to make the experience also in musicals be one where we are watching human beings and the human beings are speaking and singing rather than a flat kind of image of sound coming at you. Um, I think that the uh, tinniness is, um, you know, it, it's really a sen um, an issue of EQing each person individually. Now I work with an associate um, Sam Kuznets, who is just a genius with these things. And um, so in Mary Jane, the, you know, the stage is divided into, I think, six different zones for us. And every time an actor moves from one zone to the next, the, their voices shift into a different preset. Because each, you want to preserve a sense of space. So you can't just have, if an actor standing extreme stage right, you can't have their voice coming out of the center. So every zone had a different composition of, you know, surround speakers and the main speakers and fills that were part of that picture. Um, and I think, and then 
being really skilled, which again, Sam was instrumental in this at tracking the EQ needs of the of each particular actor, also from scene to scene, depending on what kind of performance. They're also, delivering. if they're supposed to be in a different room in each scene, I imagine the room has different acoustics, different echo, different. Does he work that in as well? I'm guessing. I don't know, but yeah. Well, when it came to the other room, that's true. That was a real um, trying to preserve the sense that those people are physically in that other space and yet have them be heard, that that was a whole nother set. We experimented a lot with that, with how to, you know, the degree, the degree to which people could be live, I, not live, but um, uh, that their voices could be sort of naked coming out of the room and to the degree to which that needed to be reinforced, it's tricky. Now, let me ask you, I mean, now that you've got this Tony nomination and you are sound designer, Leah, Gelpi, Leah Gelpi, sorry. Does that um, push away the multimedia stuff? You used to do projections mainly for your off and off off Broadway work and work when you were in Israel. So, I mean, now are you do you have to be a sound person or can you still move among the multimedia things? Well, I've actually, um, although I think I've always done sound too. And I used to kind of go back and forth a lot or as you, during the period when I was working with Jay Scheib, I would do a lot. I would often do the sound and the video and they're very tied together. We were working with a lot of live feed and the sound and video came hand in hand. Um, as my work has continued, um, I am doing more and more sound. And I, at this point, I usually do video when and if it is intricately tied to the sound. So if they really require that kind of tight knit, because otherwise it, it's very on productions where I'm doing sound and someone else is doing the video and yet they have to be closely tied together. It can get, you know, interdepartmental, it, it's tricky. Um, does that answer your question? Absolutely. It absolutely does. And we just have time for like one more quick question for mm -hmm. Leah Gilpie, Tony nominee. Well, what are you working on now? What, is there something coming to off Broadway or Broadway or elsewhere in the country? What are you working on? I am working on getting more work. You know, I feel like on, like I, uh, you know, I went off onto the mommy track for a while um, I have a couple of kids and um, now they're getting older and I feel sort of more able to like step back into a busier schedule. Um, but that that's a shift and, you know, I'm speaking with different people, but. Um, well, the nomination. Let's see. The, you know, the, the fact that you're now Leah Gelpi, Leah Gelpi, Tony nominee is is like you know that goes top of the resume right there that's right like, that's true that's true hoping this will boost me yeah certainly will i hope so too because you've been an absolutely delightful guest i do want to wish you a mazel tov on your nomination and the kids so thank you great time for you thank you so much leah gelpi for joining us in the neighborhood my pleasure